सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओं सहना सह नौभुनक्त सह वीकवाहे तेजस्वीतमस्तुमाषा वह ओं शाति 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 We were looking at the fundamental problem of a human being, which is one of inadequacy, which is one of self non-acceptance, because one looks at oneself as a limited, inadequate person. So one's pursuit is really a pursuit. of discovering oneself as an adequate adequate person free from all limitations now this adequacy or limitlessness cannot be the result of any action because all action involve some change change means it involves both gain and loss and from any process of change we cannot attain the limitless because the results of all action are nothing but finite by adding any amount of finite things you can never arrive at infinite so the pursuit of adequacy is nothing but a pursuit of discovering oneself as adequate which has to be there already that is the only uh, only possibility i would say if we have to discover ourselves as adequate we have to already be adequate here and now we cannot reach it we cannot create it newly if that is the case we are trying to accomplish something which is already accomplished and that is only possible through knowledge it is not a result of any action because the loss itself is a loss due to ignorance i already have something but i do not know that i have it so if ignorance is the issue or problem the resolution has to come through knowledge alone so my pursuit now becomes a pursuit of knowledge and to gain knowledge i require a valid means of knowledge this also we saw we have been provided with means of knowledge we have sense perception then we also have different types of inference based on the sense perception all these means of knowledge only help me to know the objects in this world they are all giving me objective knowledge i am the knower the subject but this fundamental problem is centered on myself i do not know myself properly my own reality correctly then how do i know myself the subject that's where the problem is because the subject cannot be objectified and known because as soon as you objectify something you are the subject who is objectifying it you can never be the object and all the means of knowledge which is already given to me like sense perception and different types of inference do not help so how do i know myself that's where we saw that words are the ones which can actually help me to know myself words themselves may be <laughs> 
they are coming to us through some sense organ correct either you are reading the words or more importantly in our tradition we say you have to listen to the guru you have to you are listening to the words of the guru so the words which you are listening actually are coming to you through a sense organ only but still it is not sense perception because the sound then becomes a word attached to a particular meaning correct so words are not really sense perception it is an independent means of knowledge in itself and they give you certain knowledge either direct or indirect depending on what they are revealing if the words are revealing to you something which is not available to you immediately then words can only give you indirect knowledge this also we understand if somebody is talking to you about some switzerland you have never been to switzerland the words will still give you some knowledge but it is not we cannot say that it is a direct knowledge or complete knowledge or anything like that you have to go and verify of course you have no reason to disbelieve the person who is telling you something he is a reliable source of information but still the words can only give you indirect knowledge here but what about an object which you are actually experiencing but about which you did not know there was no recognition so for example your classmate you studied with 20 years back devadatta okay that devadatta was <laughs> was 60 kg okay athletic all that black hair now you are meeting your classmate after 20 years you have gone to some reunion meeting but somebody has come you are trying to <laughs> recognize you are not able to recognize who this person is because this devadatta is 90 kg all white hair beard looks very different correct with reference to all the qualities even the voice has changed so then somebody has to come and tell you correct this is that devadatta soyam devadatta this is that devadatta then you recognize ah yeah devadatta my friend so here words give you direct knowledge because the object is available to you so whenever the object is available but you have not recognized words will give you direct knowledge now let us take the words of the guru guru is the one who is teaching you guru's words you are hearing guru's words you are reading and what you are trying to know you are trying to know yourself now your self is always available to you you are never away from yourself correct you can be away from anything else but you can never be away from yourself so experience is not a problem here everybody is experiencing themselves all the time in fact the problem itself is experience actually because there are too many experiences you are not able to form any coherent idea out of all this contradictory experience about oneself at some time you feel very happy contented complete i don't require anything else at other times you feel miserable during waking you have a particular experience in dream you are having totally a different experience in deep sleep there is some other experience 
so experience is not an issue but you have confusion with reference to yourself who am i really and you have taken yourself for granted many people don't even analyze themselves they have taken themselves for granted they lead their entire life and life also is over and they have to take another life so words of the guru give you direct knowledge about yourself that is the first thing we have to understand again words for them to give you knowledge they have to be used properly the words have to be used in a particular context then only the words are also effective in conveying the the knowledge okay because words are the means of knowledge for us now here also traditionally there is a story the story of the 10th man so this story is told if you have already attended some vedanta you would have already heard it but anyway so what is the story there was a guru in fact they said that uh, the name of that guru is paramananda paramananda shishya so there were 10 shishyas of that guru so one day the they all wanted to go to the next town the the gurukulam is somewhere remote they all wanted to go to the town and enjoy let us say or they wanted to go for some festival function guru could not come so he said okay all of you ten of you go but be careful the river is in full flow so take care of yourself while crossing the river but all these people were there all enthusiastic to go so they said no problem we will take care of ourselves so one person was the leader in that he, he told the guru no problem guruji i will take care of all these people we will uh, go and come back okay so they are all crossing the river of course river crossing can be very difficult the current can take you here and there so they all started swimming and then they could not even come to the shore together they all came from different places they assembled and then the leader said okay let me make sure that all of us are there so he counted 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 nine. only 9 nine he counted 10th man is missing again he counted again 10th man is missing then he started panicking how will i now answer i told my guru that i will take care of all these people now one person is gone how am i going to explain it so there was gloom everywhere all the other people also became afraid now now this whole thing one old man was watching from a distance okay now this old man understood what the problem is because the old man is seeing all the ten standing there and all this counting going on and how all of them are now in panic so old man comes so first what does he do he wants to make them calm correct they are all in panic one person is lost so he says hey don't worry i know where the 10th man is the 10th man is there do not worry that is the first statement he makes and i will show you the 10th man here and now right now now on hearing this what happens hearing these words everybody is calmed the leader also thinks that okay this old man looks reliable he has no reason to lie to us so i have shraddha in his words and he is telling that he will show the 10th man 
right now also okay he is not saying i will show you 10th man tomorrow it's not useful to me <laughs> because by evening i have to go back to my guru he is saying i will show you the 10th man right now and here so i have a reason to believe this person and that shraddha initially his words are only giving you indirect knowledge because he the, the wise old man also what does he say he says i will show you 10th man is there so hearing that these people become you can say from panic they have calmed down they have become neutral they are open to whatever the wise man or how in whichever way he is going to show the 10th man they are ready to receive that that is important then what does he say the wise man he says a again start counting so now this leader is irritated a little bit so he thinks i i have already counted many times what is this why should i go through this again but anyway since the old man looks serious and this person also has shraddha in that person so he starts counting again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 then what the old man says tatva masi you are the 10th man so then that leader recognizes oh i am the 10th man i missed counting myself they are all happy so here the words you are the 10th man tatva masi did it give indirect knowledge or direct knowledge it gave direct knowledge that i am the 10th man i don't have to do anything further right once i knew i am the 10th man i don't have to do some shirasasana to understand that it has given direct knowledge but what was the problem again <laughs> you don't have to hear the word you are the 10th man and then experience something specially to understand that you are already experiencing yourself all the time correct the problem here is that the 10th man was not totally unknown the leader who was counting knew himself he knew that 10 people have started from the gurukulam 10 people try to cross the river but when counting he did not count himself so the whole confusion started from there the confusion is not due to lack of experience of oneself the leader had certain leader is all the time experiencing himself he knew he had some knowledge already correct but that knowledge was not complete it was partial in fact partial knowledge alone is the problem understand that if you do not know something <laughs> totally if total ignorance is there there is no scope of making any error if you do not, do not see the rope at all there is no problem if it is so dark that you are not able to see anything at least you won't move anywhere you will be sitting somewhere let us say but in twilight if you are seeing and something you are able to see but you are not very sure then you project a snake on that so here also the 10th man problem why it is there because he is trying to seek the 10th man or all 10 of them but the seeker once you become a seeker you cannot be the sought that is the problem thus you became a subject who is counting all the objects but you do, did not look upon yourself as one of the objects so the self knowledge itself is is simple in one way if you see 
but it is also difficult hard why because it is about the subject the very act of seeking will <laughs> make you not look upon yourself correct as the sort you are seeking adequacy somewhere else while all the time it is there with you only so that is why the guru is important the words of the guru are important and again the words of the guru cannot be something different from whatever is already there in the veda because the veda is the one we accept as a valid means of knowledge we saw that already the veda is available it's a body of knowledge made up of words it is like a mirror word mirror but when you can go and read it but still it's not easy okay in fact there is a saying saying in the tradition what is that saying panditopi even if you are a pandita okay atma anveshanam swataha na kurya okay like this there is a statement panditopi shastra anveshanam also it is said shastra anveshanam means examining the shastra studying the shastra because shastra anveshanam is finally atma anveshanam only trying to know oneself swataha na kurya don't do it yourself shastra anveshanam particularly with reference to atma gnanam with reference to knowing oneself one should not do because it can be confusing self study is okay initially to <laughs> to generate some interest and all that paper backs can help you but soon you will find that you are confused because to even interpret one word in the beginning you should have the understanding of the entire shastra you should have the vision of the entire thing then only you can understand it properly otherwise words themselves can become confusing so guru is important guru's word only give you direct knowledge the words themselves give you direct knowledge you don't have to do anything after knowing to know you have to make lot of effort because every knowledge requires prerequisites we all know that you cannot go and sit in a quantum mechanics class without already knowing some mathematics some algebra some calculus even some other basic physics you have to know most scientific knowledge at least objective knowledge does not require emotional maturity of course emotional maturity also is highly valued even if you go for a job interview and all that they see you how because if you are working in a team if you are working in any organization whether you will fit there whether you can work work with others that's also important but purely from a standpoint of knowing something emotional maturity may not be a prerequisite but intellectually you should still be prepared but this knowledge there are qualifications are there so all the effort is actually to prepare yourself the effort is going and sitting in a guru's class and listening to the guru all that is effort but once you hear the words the words are the means of knowledge there is no effort your free will has no more role you have to let the words of the guru operate reveal who you are really and knowledge is always true to the object you have to know yourself as you are you have to know anything as it is correct you cannot know an apple as an orange just because you like orange and you do not like apple 
if it is apple we have to know it as apple because all knowledge has to be true to the object which you are knowing like that once you hear the words of the guru the words of the guru are revealing yourself it is like a mirror which is revealing the subject and they operate the words operate and produce a knowledge in which there is no role for your free will and it gives you direct knowledge about yourself because you are already there always you are never away from yourself experience is not a problem and another thing is a guru should know how to teach like in the 10th man story the first thing the old man said was what the 10th man is there so he made the students comfortable although they, they don't have the knowledge yet but they have to be calm they have to be prepared then he created a context because words work well only when they are used properly in a context and how did that old man create the context he asked the leader to count again then when he got stuck after nine he revealed you are the 10th man so once the words are used in a proper context they reveal to you directly they reveal that is the power of the words word words are independent means of knowledge then they reveal so in this case again that old man already had the knowledge of uh, that knowledge that the all 10 people are there correct only the one who has the knowledge can communicate that can teach that that is also important correct so this, this is where who is a guru or what type of a guru should you approach assuming that you have analyzed the world you have understood your own fundamental problem and you are realizing that it is not something i can gain by accomplishing anything in this world i cannot resolve this problem like that so i need to know my own reality so you want to approach a guru so the upanishad also says that sa guru meva abhigachet so the one who is a mumukshu one who has analyzed and understood one's own fundamental problem should approach a guru because the guru's words only give you direct knowledge but what type of guru shrotriyam brahmanishtam upanishad itself says very clearly the guru has to be a shrotriya and a brahmanishta now what do these two words convey shrotriyam means one who has listened guru must have been one who has listened to the shastra from his own guru understand that and gain that knowledge shrotriya comes from shruti only shruti means that which is heard shrotram means ear shrotriya means the one who has listened already one who knows the shastra because this person has listened to the shastra from his own guru and not only knows the shastra but knows the methodology to teach because that also you learn from your guru correct right? once you attend your guru's classes once you start listening to the shastra from your guru you not only understand what the shastra is revealing you also understand how it is being revealed the methodology is very important that is called sampradaya sampradaya with means one who knows how to handle the shastra how to teach the methodology in fact shankaracharya in gita bhashya says that if one does not know how to teach asampradaya with he says one who does not know the sampradaya you should you should avoid such people okay he says that openly 
Okay. So this teaching methodology is important because you have to create a certain context and use the words judiciously in a particular context. Then only they reveal clearly. Otherwise, the words themselves can cause confusion. So shrotriyam is very important. That is why apne ap. If somebody says, "No, I knew, I sat in meditation and somehow I gained enlightenment." Okay, even if we give the benefit of the doubt and accept that person as enlightened, most probably that person will not know how to teach. He will make Vedanta into some mysticism. He will take you on a ride, experience. You are, you will all be seeking experience, some experience, some. Blowing of light in your head, you will be sitting for thirty years. Nothing may work. I have seen people like that. So, apne ap those who do not have a guru themselves, you should be wary of such people. Even if you accept that person as a great person and all that, you can do namaskara and take blessings, but that person cannot be a guru. The guru must have had a guru. Guru must have studied the shastra, listened to it, and should know how to teach it also. That is very important. The other word is Brahmanishtam. That is even more important. Brahmanishtam means what? Brahman. The word comes from the dhatu or root brihi brihi vridhau. That is how in Sanskritam the brih dhatu. root means vridhav in the sense of big or grown okay that which is coming in the sense of big no big as an adjective we all know but even there the big can have different meaning correct big mosquito is different from a big mountain correct the big <laughs> mosquito means there the big meaning of big is different but brahman when we say big is there as a noun there is no adjective it is big it is the big means it is the limitless so brahman means something which is limitless which is free from any limitation with reference to space time and objects that brahman nishtha means what one who is steadfast in the knowledge of that brahman or in that brahman itself because knowledge of brahman is not separate from brahman so brahmanishtha means one who is steadfast in knowing oneself as brahman because the one who knows oneself as adequate as the limitless alone can convey that also effectively if somebody is a shrotriya has studied the shastra many people study the shastra for even getting a phd understand that scholars are there they are not mumukshus they want to get a good job in a university so they study in fact even christian missionaries came and studied our shastra <laughs> their aim was totally different they only wanted to undermine it or somehow understand these people what they believe and try to convert them they also studied in fact they did lot of work they collected lot of manuscripts although their intention was not very good they did lot of work actually so you can study the shastra for any number of reasons and such people also can talk to you but they will say in third person they will say the shastra says that you are brahman <laughs> that will not that will still be like an indirect knowledge you can get still but not effective because the one who does not know oneself as adequate oneself as the source of all happiness if oneself is not happy how can that person make others happy not possible so brahmanishtam guru has to be brahmanishtam steadfast 
in the understanding of oneself as limitless, as adequate in all respects, fulfilled, complete, all this. That Guru will be happy to teach because Guru has no other role to play really. Anybody who is a qualified student, if you go to a Guru, Guru is always happy to teach. Nothing better to do anyway. The parampara also has to be there. Correct? It is an unbroken lineage starting from Ishwara, we say. Because when I start the class also, I have a prayer. Sada, Shiva, Samarambham. There is also one more prayer like that. Narayanam Padma Bhuvam Vasishtam Shaktin Chatat Putra Parasharancha Vyasam Shukam Gauda Padam Mahantam Govinda Yogi Indra Mathasya Shishyam Shri Shankaracharya Mathasya Padma Padancha Sta Malakancha Shishyam Tam Totakam Vartika Karamanyan Asmat Gurun Santata Manatosmi So you either you start from Narayana and come to your Guru. In between you list all the other great gurus in the lineage. And Shankara is said particularly there because Shankara revived the whole teaching tradition in between. Or Sadashiva Samarambham, Shankaracharya Madhyamam. So Shankara you specially say, Asmadacharya Paryantam, my own guru, up to my own guru, I do namaskara to the guru parampara. Because the lineage only has kept this knowledge alive and it is going. And this knowledge has to flow. It is like a jnana ganga. That's why we say it has to keep flowing. Guru is always happy to teach provided there are students. If there are no students also, Guru is happy. Guru does not care. Understand that. A Guru who is a Brahmanishta cannot be a manipulative person. So you have to look for certain things in a guru also because it is like a spiritual supermarket nowadays, correct? So many people are there. Everybody is teaching something and it may be useful to you also. I am not saying that none of these things are useful. Anything which helps you to become emotionally mature also is a useful thing. But at the end of the day, they have to teach you about your own limitlessness. That is the main thing. Otherwise, you are still the same individual who will be struggling with a maybe a better mind than whatever was there before. Okay. Mentally, you may be better off, which is also a, a desirable thing. But it's not enough. Or some people are just promising you they are all tourism promotion only. <laughs> Those things you have to avoid, I think, because they are not giving you anything here. Call me, and then you can go somewhere to Swarga, Golok Brindavan, Vaikuntha, whatever it is, heaven. There you will enjoy. That is all tourism promotion. You never know whether you are going to enjoy, you are even going to go there and whether you will enjoy. Right? You have a problem right here, right now. It is like that, uh, that old man saying, no, I will tell you, I will show you the 10th man in heaven, you come with me. Hey, I don't want to come go to heaven, I want to go back to my guru in the evening. Show me here and now. My problem is right now. It's not going to get solved by traveling somewhere, by reaching anywhere. That is the kind of uh, certain certainty you should have. The discernment also is important. So the Guru should teach you. There has to be teaching wherever you go. Because people also get attracted to all miracles and all that. But there is no greater miracle than knowledge about yourself. That is the most important thing. Anybody who teaches you or at least prepares you for this teaching only is a guru. Everybody may not teach you straight away. 
because they will also see whether you can receive it or not so at least a sampradaya guru will help you to grow to attain the qualifications required for gaining this knowledge and then in fact this all this teaching of upanishad was kept, kept a secret only in fact upanishad word itself has a technical meaning of a secret also so it was not given to everybody even like 200 years back uh, unless you take sanyasa they won't teach you of course there were some householder paramparas also were there but they were all mostly scholars panditas but this teaching tradition was there but you have to go to the himalayas go to kashi take sanyasa like that there were some restrictions nowadays it is available to you in fact it is a different type of problem now everybody has a youtube channel you have access to so many things you can listen to th things yourself you don't have to go to kashi or himalayas you don't have to take sanyasa but still it is also a problem you don't know what to take what to leave how to understand certain things that there seems to be at least some contradiction between what different people are saying to make a uh, uh, one whole understanding out of it correct coherently to understand everything also may be a problem so that is why one requires a guru ideally one should go and live with the guru gurukula vasam is important that is why even our avatars and all they went to the gurukula correct krishna went to sandipani rama went to vashishta there is a yoga vashishta also where vashishta even though rama is a avatara of bhagavan but rama also was taught so learning from a guru is very important one of the arguments which people give nowadays is did ramana have guru they take some example like even in the shastra it is there okay vamadeva is supposed to have said <laughs> i am manu i am surya right in the womb itself so did he have a guru then valid question correct even in the bradharnika upanishad the prajapati knew about himself okay he knew it because initially he was afraid nobody else was there then he understood that self alone i i am alone there there is no bhaya karana there is no second thing i am everything then in that place there is a question is asked in the shankaracharya's commentary shankara himself asks the question how did prajapati know this atma gnanam without a guru and shastra and all that then he is answering prajapati is having a special upadhi correct the prajapati sharira prajapati's mind body mind sense complex is special it is born out of lot of karma and upasana etc in previous janma only the prajapati has undergone everything we have to take and so prajapati can know it but not uh, we are all not prajapatis you understand that you cannot make a rule out of an exception this is a mistake people do if you read ramana ramana himself says that you have to go to a guru he does not say that in fact if you are ready ramana was always focusing on your effort you have to put in effort very important correct if you are ready guru will appear guru is not separate from the self understand that guru is not separate from bhagavan also because guru is one who has understood that so ramana used to say your guru will appear once you are ready and guru's teaching will finally show you you are not separate from the guru right the self alone is appearing as the guru and that will then lead you to understand yourself
so there are many people who quote like this and argue so all of them we say that if you are like ramana you won't be arguing with me at least okay so that itself proves that you require a guru so without a guru you do not get access to the shastra properly and without knowing what the shastra is revealing about ourselves we cannot gain this knowledge because shastra is the only means of knowledge which reveals my own reality if you don't take the shastra as a means of knowledge then you have only confusion because many people are claiming many things about oneself correct the buddhists are saying there are there is no self okay anatma they are talking about anatma shunya the jains are saying that self is of the measure of this body physical body nayayika is saying it is anuparimana modern scientist is saying it is all like some activity in the brain alone is the self there is nothing they are also like buddhist only in some form correct or charvaka charvaka claims that like if you bring this betel nut betel leaf lime and all that and mix it you get red color like that you bring everything and then consciousness appears a consciousness is produced like we should not say appears so like this many theories are there how are you going to know which is correct that is why the shastra as a means of knowledge is very important and whatever the shastra says can never be negated and it is the one which is telling you that there is a self which is free from this body mind sense complex shastra only has to reveal that self which is separate which is the subject which is the invariable in each and every cognition that conscious being is you but not only that there is only one consciousness which is appearing as this entire world which is the basis for this entire world and that consciousness is you who is limitless you are not a being in space time space time is in you in fact you are someone who transcends this space time you are the very existence on which everything depends everything has only dependent existence you are the only independent existent being self revealing self existent being who is free from all limitations who is the source of all happiness this shastra only is revealing no other pramana reveals that all theologies are only tourism promotion they keep you as you are and try to send you somewhere so taking the shastra as a valid means of knowledge is what we call shraddha means initially you have to take the shastra even though you don't understand what it says it is like that people the those 10 persons they had shraddha on the old man correct when he said initially that yes the 10th man is there don't worry shastra also says that you are the limitless okay even though i don't understand that straight away i have shraddha i don't dismiss it i am ready to go through a certain process of knowing by giving the benefit of the doubt to whatever the shastra is revealing whatever the guru is revealing so that is the starting point then it is a process okay it is a process you have to submit yourself to shravanam mananam nididhyasanam we say so that it takes certain time we cannot say how long and all that correct it depends on your own preparation your own effort also and how much you are ready how much interest you have 
but it is a it is a definite uh, result you will get okay it is a way in which you will get the results definitely because it is something which is coming down to us for ages it is a proven thing so that is what you have to look for that you have to look for a guru who is also a teacher so just don't go for some miracle and all that even after any miracle you are the same individual subjected to the same problems it doesn't change you in any way that is something you have to understand so wherever there is teaching there only the guru is and the teaching also should make you complete adequate limitless then only it is proper teaching again so that is something you have to understand so uh, we will close this class here om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 harihi om shri gurubhyo namaha harihi om